Well, guys, it happened. In 2016, I announced to the world that I saw what looked like a giant jellyfish swimming around the atmosphere of the moon. With the Freedom of Information Act, we have the blackvault.com, our friend John Greenwald that is bringing out a whole bunch of classified documents and videos that sometimes take a year and a half, could take it even longer and does cost him some money to bring these thing out things out, sorry, to the public. The FAA confirms jellyfish like large unknown object flying over Minneapolis, Minnesota. And this on October 7th, 2022. Let's get into it. The Black Vault received word of this incident by someone who wishes to remain anonymous, I wonder why, but had access to the FAA database that listed the report. It was sent out to the Black Vault in mid-November of 2022. The text related to the incident was sent via email to the Black Vault, stated the following. The text related to the incident was sent via email to the Black Vault and stated the following. Across Tower LSE reported they had a target five miles south of La Crosse. The object was described as a large and at low level with altering red, blue, and green lights. ATC reported that they could not tell if it was a UAS, uh, but were getting strong primary returns. They also stated that drones don't generally register as a primary target. The ZMP sector that showed the primary return reported it was a strong return with crosses on the screen all over the place. The 10th of the 7th month, 2022, aircraft reported an unidentified aerial phenomena. The unknown phenomenon was observed by La Crosse, right? And described as having flashing green, red, blue lights and appeared to look like, yes, a jellyfish. Phenomenon was traveling westbound. ZMP observed the primary target on radar in the area. No aircraft observations when later quarreled. ZMP reported no additional observations on radar. On November 15th, 2022, the Black Vault filed a request for additional information. Sadly, although ATC Recordings has a retention schedule 45 days before they are destroyed, it was noted that the in the FAA response that the records were no longer available. So they come out and then they they get rid of the information, right? The information is sent off to someone and then it gets destroyed. The Black Vault has not done a formal investigation on this incident. Rather, the page you are now reading was set up to archive a confirmed sighting archived with the FAA's files. Should any independent investigation add anything to the story, the page will be updated if the information is verifiable. Well, rumors, they like using that word, rumors of another UFO sighting in Wisconsin. That's right. Somebody, a couple actually, on a farm, they were driving probably to their farm or from their farm and noticed something that looked like what they could only perceive as a white owl that swooped down from a tree to land on the ground. Then they said that three times a white light swooped down into the headlights of their car, three times thus confirming that it was absolutely not a white owl. And yet another shift in the terminology this morning on blackvault.com, a report, a short report talking about unidentified aerial phenomena. Have you ever heard of that? Well, unidentified aerial phenomena, does it have two meanings now or have they just changed the term and the meaning itself? Even though they're still doing research on unidentified aerial phenomena and the term UAP, right, under that term, but now... We're hearing terms like unidentified anomalous phenomena, something I mentioned to you just a couple of weeks ago, saying they're going to have to come up with these terms exactly, like I said, because of all the different characterizations and different sightings. We can't put all these UFOs around the world in one 
characterized boat because there's a whole bunch of different events and different phenomena happening, different shapes and sizes and forms, and some of these events happen only one time. New term the Pentagon brought up when speaking of UFOs. We will see this for sure throughout the years coming because they're going to try to update this database either to deliberately confuse us or not. There are many types of unidentified aerial phenomena. So you're listening to recently updated UFO news about everything UFO related. The UFO reports that have come out finally after more than 50 years. We've been waiting to hear so many things. And even now with everything they're divulging, they're telling us, people are saying, well, they're not saying anything. I get it. Like, I mean, I feel for you guys. I feel the same way. I feel just as greedy as you all uh, in wanting to know the truth. I, I hear you. Stratcom reports. These are reports coming in from Stratcom now. They revealed previously unknown effort of an investigation into unidentified aerial phenomena. The Pentagon very quickly denied this and explained that it was a simple error. Let's get into it. Post by John Greenwald on the blackvault.com. In the military world of researching unidentified aerial phenomena or UAPs, the list of research efforts, acronyms, and task forces keeps growing. Despite some controversy and fine print details on the exact scope of some earlier programs, the efforts known as AAWSAP, we got ATIP, AATIP, AATIP, UAPTF, you have AOIMSG, and AARO. They have all been said to represent some form of research into the UAP phenomena, as I said, most of which was officially sanctioned and mandated. Now that list gets even longer. In two formerly classified top secret reports from the United States Strategic Command, written in July and August of 2020, was released in part to the Black Vault in December of 2022. It reveals the unidentified aerial phenomenology, UAP Joint Interagency task force whoa a joint interagency task force so there's not just uh you know one task force uap task force well the full acronym uap j-i-a-t-f but despite details about classified briefings and at least two mentions of the uap joint task force in formerly top secret documents written nearly a month apart the Pentagon claims the group name was just a mistake. Just over four hours after being asked by the Black Vault, the Pentagon quickly shot down in a statement the idea that UAP Joint Task Force even existed. Just a simple error in terminology, they say. Some of the things I've been saying over the years and showing my research is that I believe whistleblowers will always exist and even on the inside, on the inside of the FBI, we have Kyle Sarrazin exposed by the Project Veritas website explaining that Kyle, the FBI member, even had problems with his family when he went to the press to start talking about some of the bad things going on on the inside. It's going to come out from the inside. We've had big WikiLeaks leaks come out on the inside. As a matter of fact, and I mention it all the time, MK Ultra mind controlling programs, which I believe still go on, and there's even proof today that some of those programs and projects are still going on. They exist. There's a manipulation on the human uh, mankind and womankind. All the humans are being manipulated through frequencies. Kyle came out to speak about some of the things inside. So that's one connection on the inside, right? We have Edward Snowden on the inside that had come out many years ago. He was also with the FBI or the CIA. These people were all on the inside or Pentagon, whatnot. These, you know, some of these people are agents. And uh, MK Ultra, like back in the 70s and 80s, when it came out uh, during the time that um, Paperclip and was spoken about the project, well, there's 30,000, 20, between 20 and 30,000 files that were destroyed. The Helm story, right? About the CIA under Maurice Duplessis. We have the Canadian Holocaust where there were 
manipulating and crossing um, orphans over to be experimented on and lobotomized in Canada. So all these things going on on the inside, sometimes the people on the inside want to help push that out.